Welcome to the Jongets Games tutorial for Duffers. In this video, I'll be teaching you the rules to the game as we play through the first few rounds. Now, I would like to ask that if you end up enjoying this video, that you please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. In addition to that, if you'd like to directly support the channel in the creation of future tutorials like this one, then please go to jongetsgames.com support. There you'll find a bunch of ways that you can really help things out, and some of them come with cool bonuses like voting on a few of the videos that I film each month. All right, let's jump into the game. Out here, we have the game fully set up and ready to play for our three different players. Now, before I start, I would like to ask that you please turn on the Klingon subtitles. I might make mistakes as I'm showing you the game, and those will let me put corrections on the screen where you should be able to see them. I'd also like to mention that today I am filming this with a prototype version of the game, and this video will also include this mat, which helps organize the play space, but this will not necessarily come with every retail version of the game. Well, let's start things off with a brief overview of the game. Each player begins with the same small deck of cards, and as we play through the game, players will be able to add new cards to this deck by putting them into their discard pile, and once they have run through their whole deck, they will then shuffle their discard pile and make a new deck. So as we play, this deck will get larger and larger, and the way that works is on a player's turn, they can play cards either for credits, which lets them purchase new cards that they can then add into their deck, or they can use those cards for yardage. Now, you will add up all of the yardage that you played, and if you meet or just barely exceed the yards for any of the holes you haven't completed, you can then complete that hole and take a reward card if there is one available. You can then take the score pad here and write down the number of strokes that it took for you to complete that hole, and we are going to keep playing the game until any one player has completed all of the holes or until we've collectively purchased enough Pro Shop cards to deplete the Pro Shop deck. Once the game is over, players are going to be penalized for the holes they did not complete by adding a number of strokes down here equal to double the par value of those holes, and once we add up all of the strokes on this score pad, the player with the lowest score will be the winner. Alright, I think it's now time for us to start playing the game, and for this tutorial, we are going to be playing as player number one down here. Now we are also the starting player, so let's go ahead and take the first turn of the game. The first thing that we have to do is draw five cards from the top of our shuffled up starting deck, and it's worth noting that all players are going to do this at the start of the game. So let's take a look at our starting hand of cards. As you can see, we have two whiffs and three chip shots, and our starting deck contains seven chip shots and three whiffs. That means there are five cards on the top of our deck, and we know that there are four chip shots and just one whiff in there. Now that's going to be our hand for the next turn, but for now, this is our hand. Now, as you can see, these whiffs are duff cards, and in general, you don't want to see duff cards. These are going to make it harder to play a good game of golf. This says it adds zero yards and plus one strokes if we are trying to complete a hole, and it also says that you must play this duff card if it's in your hand. So we can start off by playing both of our duff cards because we are forced into it, and these don't add any credits. All they do is add to our strokes if we do complete a hole. Now, fortunately, it doesn't look like we are going to complete a hole, so this penalty isn't really going to matter. We can place this in front of us, and now we have these three chip shots. Now, as you can see down below, they each show that they add 30 yards, and they add one stroke, or they can add 20 credits. So whenever you play a card with an or like this, you have to decide which of these two things it is going to be helping for. Now, as you can see, we could play all three of these out for yardage, and that would get us to 90 yards. But that's not even enough to meet the minimum yardage for the shortest holes that are out here. Now, every hole has a condition listed down at the bottom, and every single one has a condition that shows a P. That means you must play a card that acts as a putter, and we have not played any cards that show that. You can tell because the cards that act as putters will say so down below, and they will have a P on them. So that means even if we had enough yardage to meet one of these holes, we have not met the condition of having to have a putter. No one has a putter in their starting deck, so that means for the player's first two turns, they will only be buying cards instead of completing holes. This means we are going to play all of our cards for their credits, and that is going to bring us to 60 credits total. Now, we are allowed to buy up to 60 credits worth of cards. We can pick up as many as we want to, and when we look up here at the Pro Shop, there is only one card that we can afford. That is Golf Shoes and its Equipment. That says down here that uh, it will give 30 yards and zero strokes, which is good when you're trying to complete a hole, or it will add 30 credits when you play it. And it also says when you play this card for yardage, you get to draw a card. Now that is pretty powerful, but it is worth noting that there are three other card options that we can purchase. 
These are down here in the stacks, and every card in these stacks are the same. So we could purchase a 3-putt for 50 of our 60 credits. Now that does act as a putt, which is certainly good. It adds three strokes with no yards, but again, you need to have a putter in order to complete any of the holes. Now there's also this broken tee, which we could afford. That adds 10 yards and zero strokes, or 10 credits when you play it. But the bigger thing about this is it says at the end of the game, for every two broken tee cards that you still have in your deck, you subtract one stroke from your final score. So that means every two of these cards that you have will make your score more competitive once the game is over. Lastly, there is the Vintage Driver. Now that costs 80, so we are not actually allowed to purchase it this turn. We don't have enough credits, but when we take a look at it, you can see it adds a whopping 165 yards and a single stroke, or it adds 50 credits. Now both of those are awesome, and when we look down below, it says when this card is played for yardage to successfully complete a hole, you trash this card at the end of your turn, which means you add it back over here onto the stacks. Now once again, we have 60 credits to spend, so I'm tempted to pick up this 3-putt, but I think I'm actually going to go with the golf shoes. I like the idea of spending all of the credits that we have this turn, and this certainly seems like a powerful card to have in our deck. So we successfully bought this by spending all three of these as credits, and that means we can put all three of these directly into our discard pile, and then every card that we gain will also go directly into our discard pile. Now, at this point, I think we are done with our turn. We played both of our whiffs, which ended up not doing anything because we did not complete any holes. Now, it is worth noting that on your turn, if you have no card on your caddy card spot, you can take any card from your hand and place it there and then play that as if it was part of your hand in the future. But I do not think it makes sense to put a whiff onto that spot. So let's leave that open. And I think we are now done with our turn. This means we have to take all of the cards in our played area and put those into our discard pile and we would also place any cards remaining in our hand into our discard pile. At this point, we will have no cards in our hand, and then we need to draw the top 5 cards from our deck, which is of course going to be the remainder of our starting 10 card deck. Now it is worth noting that we don't have a deck anymore, and when we go to draw the next card from our deck, we will then have to shuffle up our discard pile and place it over here where it will become our new draw deck. The final thing we have to do at the end of our turn is refill any empty spots in the pro shop. So that means we draw the top card from the deck and fill in the empty spots. All right, it's time for player two to go. And they are going to start by playing four chip shots for their credits. As you can see, that is going to give them 80 credits total, which means they have enough to purchase four out of the five cards in the pro shop. Now, as you can see, they could pick up this seven iron that adds 120 yards and one stroke or 35 credits. And it says that when you play this, you reveal the top luck card and play it immediately when the player uses this card for yardage. Now, as a reminder, there's a horseshoe on the club to show that you do have to draw a luck card when you play this for yardage. The way this works is you draw the top card from the luck deck. And in here, we have various cards that give lucky breaks as well as potentially bad luck. Now, there is a wide variety of effects. You can see playing the cart path is going to give you plus 60 yards until the end of your turn. And over here, bad luck is going to lose you 75 yards from this magpie mischief. There are other things in here, like the mulligan. That says you could discard any number of cards from your hand and draw that many number of cards, which is obviously a lucky break. But then there's also things like lightning striking, which is bad luck, and it forces you to discard all equipment style cards from your hand. Now, there's obviously a wide variety of cards in this luck deck, and you can never be sure what you're going to get from it. Next up, they could easily afford to purchase this lucky hat. As you can see, it says special on the left side, and when you play the special ability, you draw a card from your deck, and then you reveal and play a luck card. You could do that, or you could play this for credits. Now, we've already talked about the regulation putt, but then over here, the Freelance Pro is just a little bit too expensive for the second player to purchase. Now, that being said, let's still take a look at the specifics. As you can see, this is a crew card, and when we look down below, it says on the course. When played, this card stays on the table for the rest of the game. Down below, it says when Freelance Pro comes into play, you draw a card. Your maximum hand size is now six cards until you complete a hole. When you do, the player to your left will then gain control of the Freelance Pro. Obviously, this is quite powerful in the short run, but it can help your opponents out. And either way, the second player does not have enough credits to purchase the Freelance Pro. The final option for them is the 7-iron. This one does not have any special abilities. It simply adds 135 yards and one stroke if you are playing for yardage, or 40 credits if you're trying to buy more cards. Now, as I said, the second player has 80 credits to spend, and they considered picking up this regulation putt, but instead, they are going to go with the 7-iron. It seems like a nice, consistent club for them to have in their deck. 
This does mean they still don't have a putter, but they do like the idea of playing this for 40 credits by itself. Now, at this point, they have one card left in their hand, which is a whiff, so they have to play this. That does not have an effect because it only uh, comes into play if you are completing holes. So now they are done with their turn. This means they can discard this, and then they can draw a new hand of five cards. Lastly, they have to refill the Pro Shop display. All right, it's now player three's turn. And they are going to start by playing three chip shots for 20 credits each, which gives them 60 credits total. After considering all of their options, they are going to buy a three putt, which costs 50 out of their 60 credits, and they are going to let the 10 credits left over go to waste. So they can add this into their deck, and they officially have a putter in their deck. And finally, they have two whiff cards, which they will simply play out. Now that's finished up their turn, so they can take all of their played or hand cards and put those into their discard pile. And then, as you can see, we do not refill the Pro Shop because there are no empty slots. Now, it's worth noting that if three player turns go by with no one purchasing any cards from the Pro Shop, then players can collectively agree to remove all of the cards and draw five new ones. That being said, if even one player does not want this to happen, then these cards will stay out here in the display. The last thing player three has to do is draw five new cards, and now it's time for us to go. So we can look at our hand, and we know that we have four chip shots because, of course, we saw three of them in our first hand. Now, we should play these for 80 purchasing power because the yardage is not going to help us out. Now, this means we could purchase anything from the stacks, and this Vintage Driver right here is a pretty awesome card. As you can see, adding 165 yards or 50 credits is powerful, although we would lose this as soon as we used it on a hole. We could also use this 80 credits to buy almost everything up here at the shop. Now, the regulation putt is nice. It's certainly better than the three putt. As you can see, the three putt adds three strokes, whereas the regulation putt only adds two. And the three putt adds 25 credits if you use it that way versus 35 credits over here. Now, that being said, the Vintage Driver once again adds 50 credits. And I think we aren't super close to completing a hole yet. So I think we should take this mostly for the credit gain. So that used up all 80 of our credits, and that's going to finish out our turn because we just have this one whiff over here, which we must play. So we can place this there, and now it's time to reshuffle up our deck because, of course, we have to draw five new cards. And after we deal these cards out, that's going to finish our turn. This means player two can go, and they have two whiffs and three chip shots, so that is going to give them 60 credits to spend. After considering their options, they would really like a putter, so they are going to pick up this three putt. Unfortunately, they don't quite have enough credits to buy the regulation putt from the pro shop. So that's going to go into their discard pile, and we can see they have played all their cards, so that's going to finish up their turn. Now they do have to draw five cards, which means they have to shuffle up their deck. And at this moment, three player turns have gone by with no one purchasing from the pro shop. Now with that in mind, we could all collectively decide to discard all of these, and I think we are all interested in seeing a different set of cards up here. So that means the Pro Shop will get reset by having all of these be discarded, and then we can draw five more from the top of the deck. Next up, let's take a look at these new cards. The first is a new glove. That says you can use it as a special ability in order to trash a card from your hand, which means you add it to the trash pile or the stacks, and then if you do so, you get to draw a card. After that, there is a 5-iron, and as you can see, it shows the luck symbol on the club, so that means when you play this for yardage, you have to draw the top luck card. The same thing is over here for this 3-wood, which has a whopping 230 yards for one stroke, but it does cost 130 credits to buy. Next up, there is the fairway wood, and this has a new symbol on the club. As you can see, it shows a lightning bolt. Now that means when you play this for yardage, you have to gain a duff card. The way this works is you draw the top card from the duff stack, and you then put this into your discard pile, and that means this is now part of your deck. Now, none of these duff cards are good for you, and all of them must be played whenever they show up into your hand. You can see this hook is going to lose you 30 yards on a turn it's played, the slice is going to lose you 40 yards, and Toad says you have the yardage of the club card in your hand with the greatest distance, and once again, you must play this whenever it's in your hand. Fortunately, they don't add to your strokes, but these are still not things that you want in your deck. Well, it's time for player three to go, and they have decided to play four chip shots for their credits. That's going to give them 80 credits total, and they are going to use that to purchase this five iron, which costs 80 credits. So that obviously is a lucky iron, which could help or hurt them when they play this for yardage, and we'll just have to see how that plays out for them later on in the game. 
So they can discard the cards they played for credits as well as the five iron they just picked up. And then they're going to play this whiff out here and that's finished up their turn. So that means they can put all of this into their discard pile and then shuffle up a new deck so that they can draw five more cards. The last thing player three needs to do is refill the pro shop. So this is a new card. It's a 15 foot ball retriever. That's a piece of equipment. And down below it says you can play this for its special ability to retrieve one club card from your discard pile and add it directly into your hand. Otherwise you can play this for 35 credits. This means we get to go once again. And if we take a look at our hand, we have one whiff, which I think we'll just play immediately. But then we have three chip shots and a vintage driver. Now, we don't have any putters, so it's impossible for us to complete any holes, so we are certainly going to play these for credits, and as you can see, that gives us 110 credits total that we can spend this turn. Now, one thing we certainly need is a putter in our deck. Currently, there aren't any putters in the pro shop, so let's spend 50 of our 111 credits to buy a 3-putt. So that is going to leave us with 60 credits left over. And that is going to be enough for us to purchase this new glove. I like the ability to trash cards from our hand. In particular, we can try to start trashing those whiffs out of our deck because those are not doing anything for us when we draw them. So we spent 105 out of our 110 credits, which seems pretty good. We can put all this into our discard pile and then place this into our discard pile as well. Now we do have to draw five more cards from the top of our deck and then refill the pro shop. The next card we will see is going to be an Arm Brace Blaster. This is a piece of equipment which costs 65 credits, and it says that you can play this special ability to trash a chip shot. If you do, you gain double the chip shot yardage, which gives you 60 yards total, until the end of your turn, or you could play this as 30 credits. So this not only removes those not great chip shots from your deck, but when you do it, it makes it a lot easier to complete a hole in that same turn. All right, it's time for player two to go. And it looks like for the first time in the game, a player is going to put a card down for yardage. They are going to play their 7 iron, which gives them 135 yards and 1 stroke. They will also play this whiff because they are forced to do so, which adds 1 stroke. And then they are going to play this 3 putt over here. Now that adds 3 more strokes with no yards, which means total they have 135 yards and 5 strokes. And they could add more if they wanted to, but they are pretty good with this for the moment. So with that in mind, they are now going to go complete a hole. So they can now take a look at all of their different hole options. Now it's worth noting that you don't actually have to decide which hole you are working towards until you have played all cards, and that also includes any luck cards that you might be forced to play as part of one of your card's options. In this case, player 2 did not play any clubs that require luck, so they simply have 135 yards. Now, as you can see, I have ordered these holes from the lowest yardage to the highest, and in order to complete a hole, you must meet or exceed the yardage value by no more than 50 yards. That means in order to make the tiny gulch hole, you need to play a yardage of between 115 and 165 yards. Likewise, beginner's luck would need between 130 and 185 yards. Now, every one of these holes requires a putter, which, of course, the second player has put down, but some of the holes have extra restrictions listed on them. Over here, Tiny Gulch says you cannot play any chip shots to complete this hole. Now, the second player did not use any chip shots, and their 135 yards does fall between 115 and 165, so they are currently in a position to complete Tiny Gulch. Then over here, for beginner's luck, we can see that wood cards cannot be used to complete this hole, but when we take a look at the cards they played, they only have an iron and a putter. None of these are woods. That means they could also use this 135 yards to complete beginner's luck if they wanted to. So they have a decision to make, and considering they don't have any wood cards yet, they figure Tiny Gulch is probably slightly harder to complete in the future, so this is the one they are going to go with. Now what they have to do is take one of their player tokens and remove it from their board. They can then place this on the hole they completed, and they can place this down onto the player two spot on the hole. Now that shows that player two has completed this hole, and they will obviously not be able to complete this one again for the rest of the game. Now at this point, if there are any cards on top of the hole, then that player can select one of these to then gain it into their discard pile. At the start of the game, we dealt out a number of cards onto each hole, equal to the number of players minus one, so that means if you are the last player to complete a hole, you do not get a benefit of a new card. Now, these cards were dealt out from the Pro Shop deck, so they can have a wide variety of actions on them. After looking at both cards, this is the one they want to go with. So that is going to go on the top of their discard pile, 
And now let's take a look at what it does. This is a fitness trainer, which means it is crew. And once again, this says it's on the course. So when you play it, this card stays on the table for the rest of the game and it never goes back into a deck. Now down below it says this adds 10 yards for each club card played for yardage this turn. Yes, this effect also counts for putt cards too. So for the rest of the game, once this is played, player two's clubs will all be just a little bit better than they used to be. The next thing I'd like to point out about completing holes is the potential for getting a bullseye bonus. This says when you complete a hole by playing the exact yardage, you may trash any card you own, and that could be from your deck, your hand, or your discard pile. The final thing player 2 needs to do is now track their strokes down onto the score pad. Now this was hole number 1, and the number of strokes they have is 3 plus 1 plus 1 or 5, so they can log 5 strokes onto the score pad. Alright, the second player is officially done with completing that hole, but before we move on with their turn, I would now like to point out that there is an A showing over here on their player token track. Now, if we look over here in the caddy card area, it explains the rules for holding caddy cards, but it also shows an area for some player token bonuses. Specifically, it says that once players are showing an A on this track, they can then, once per turn, trash a chip card from their hand to gain twice its credit value. As you can see, there is a B and a C slot as well, and if we slide these down, the B becomes unlocked once you have completed three holes. That says when you purchase a card, a player may place it into their caddy card spot if it's empty instead of putting it into their discard pile. And remember, whenever you have a card on your caddy card spot, it effectively acts as if it was in your hand so you can play it during one of your turns. Once again, remember, on your turn, you can place a card onto the caddy card spot if it's empty to hold onto it into the future. But of course, with B, that means you can put a new card you just purchased into your caddy card spot if it's empty. Now, C over here becomes unlocked once you have completed your sixth hole, and it says that players may place up to two cards onto their caddy card space on their turn. Now, obviously, at this point, player two has only unlocked the A ability on their board. So, once again, they can trash a chip card from their hand in order to gain twice its credit value, and they do indeed have one, and they're going to do that. So that means this chip shot is trashed, so it will be removed from the game, and they also get 40 credits in value. With this in mind, they are going to buy a broken T. Remember, that adds yardage without strokes, which is nice, although it's not a lot of yardage. It can also be used for 10 credits, but most importantly, every two of these that you have in your deck at the end of the game will lower your stroke score by one, and remember, the player with the lowest score is going to win. So they can add this into their discard pile, and they do have one card left in their hand. That looks to be a chip shot, and since their caddy card spot is empty, they're going to place this over here so that they can use it as if it was in their hand on a future turn. Now at this point, they have done everything they can in their turn, so that means they can discard all of their played cards, and then they can deal out 5 cards from the top of their deck. Lastly, player 2 can see that there are no slots to refill in in the pro shop, so that means their turn is officially over. This means it's now time for player 3 to go, but before we get to their turn, I would like to mention that the next thing I'm planning on talking about in detail is not only how the game will end, but also how we will count up our final scores once the game is over. Now, if you'd like to skip directly ahead and learn about that, you can go to the timestamp in the top corner, or you can stick around as I play through a couple more rounds of the game. Alright, it's time for player 3 to go. After looking at their cards, they've decided to try and complete a hole. They're going to play their 5 iron for 135 yards, and this is a luck-related club, so that means they have to draw the top luck card. That is going to be this one, and it's bad luck. It says on nuts, and it says plus one stroke until the end of your turn. So this one is going to stay over here, and now they can keep playing. Now they have to play a putter, so they will play this out here, and they're actually just going to stop here. That's 135 yards, and it looks to be five strokes. This means they have enough to complete Tiny Gulch or Beginner's Luck, and they are unfortunately just five yards over a bullseye for Beginner's Luck. Uh, they're still going to go for Beginner's Luck, though. They like the idea of picking between these two cards. So that means they can place one of their tokens down onto the player three spot and then choose one of these. And the one they're going with is going to be a five wood. This adds 222 yards for one stroke. It's a very expensive card and they're quite happy to pick this one up now. So that'll go into their discard pile and now they've unlocked their A ability, which once again means they can trash a chip card from their hand to double its credit value. They are going to do this so they can get rid of this card to gain 40 credits. And then they are going to discard two other chip shots from their hand to add 40 more credits. That means they have 80 credits that they can spend this turn. And they've decided to use those to buy this 15-foot ball retriever. That uses 70 of their 80 credits, and they'll just not use the last 10. So this will go into their discard pile. 
Next up, they have to log their score of five strokes for the second hole. And that has finished up a great turn for them. Now this luck card is no longer in play, and these cards can be discarded, and now they can draw five more cards for the next turn. After that, we can draw a new card for the Pro Shop, and this is a Titanium T. It costs 80 credits, and it adds 30 yards with no strokes, or it can give you 30 credits, and it says at the end of the game, subtract four strokes from your final score. All right, it's our turn, and I certainly don't like the fact that both of our opponents have completed a hole and we have not yet. Uh, unfortunately, once again, we will not be able to on this turn. Perhaps it was a mistake waiting so long to get a putter. Uh, either way, we have to deal with the decisions that we've made, and this looks to be a pretty plain hand here. Uh, we have four chip shots and a whiff. We obviously have to play that, so I figure we will just play all of these chip shots out for the credits. That's going to give us 80 credits total, and that is exactly enough to pick up this Titanium T, and I think that is going to be worth it to us. Adding 30 yards with no strokes is great, and also lowering our overall stroke score by 4 at the end of the game could be quite significant, especially considering right now we are a bit behind when it comes to actually completing the holes. So we can add this into our discard pile, and that's going to finish up our turn. We now have to draw 5 cards, but we only have 2 in our deck, so we have to shuffle up a new deck. And now we can draw three. Lastly, let's draw a new card out for the Pro Shop. These are Pro Shoes. It seems like we've seen a lot of equipment lately. Uh, now this says that uh, you add 50 yards and zero strokes, or 60 credits. That makes sense that it's very expensive to buy these. And it says when you play this card for yardage, you may trash a card from your hand or your discard pile. So that is a very powerful card overall. Well, it's now time for player two to go. And they'll start by playing a whiff card from their hand. Now it looks like this is a turn where they don't have much going on here. They've got four chip shots, but they do have the ability of trashing one chip shot to gain twice its credit value. They have decided to do that, so this is going to be removed. That gave them 40 credits, and they could discard all three of these to add 60 more credits if they want. In fact, they could discard this chip shot as well to add 20 more to that, so technically they could have 120 credits to spend if they want to. 120 credits is enough for them to pick up these Pro Shoes or this Fairway Wood, which is a pretty monstrous club, although it does force you to gain a Duff card. Um, the 60 credits on the back end is great, but they figure these Pro Shoes are just too powerful for them to skip on. So they will discard all three of these, as well as their Chip Shot from their Caddy. That is bringing them up to 80, plus the 40 they got for trashing this one gets them to 120, and that means they can put all of these cards into their discard pile. That was an expensive move, and it took their entire turn, but they're still feeling pretty good about it. Now they are done, so they can place this over here and draw a new hand of five cards. And then, of course, they have to refill the Pro Shop. Now this is a sponsor specialist. That is a crew member, so that means they stay on the course once they are played. And down below it says, when you play your first equipment card during your turn, you draw a card. And remember, the blue banner over here is the one for equipment. Uh, now, we actually have a couple pieces of equipment already, so hopefully this is a card that we can pick up before our opponents do. All right, it's now time for player three to go. And it looks like they're going to have a simple turn. They will play both of these whiffs, and then they're going to use their A ability to trash this chip shot. That's going to double the credits they get, bringing them to 40, and then they'll discard both of these to give themselves 40 more. That means they have 80 credits total, and they're going to use that to buy this arm brace blaster. That does mean they're wasting 15 credits, but they still feel like this is going to be worth it to them. That's finished up their turn, so now they can draw a new hand of five cards. And then the Pro Shop can be filled in. This is a five iron, which adds 175 yards, but it does force you to take a Duff card and put it into your deck. Okay, we now get to go, and if we look at our hand, we have some pretty good stuff in it. Actually, the first thing that jumps out to me is the fact that we have a new glove and a whiff. The new glove says we can play this for our special ability, and that is going to trash a card from our hand, and if we do that, we get to draw a card. Well, let's certainly do that to trash this whiff card, and then we get to draw a card, and we found our driver. Nice. Uh, now, at this point, with the driver and the putter, I think we should be able to complete a hole. Before we do that, though, let's play the golf shoes. That says this is going to give us 30 yards, and when you play this card for yardage, you can draw a card. 
So we can draw another one and we found another chip shot. Okay, let's definitely start to piece together some yardage. We can begin with the vintage driver. That is going to give us 165 yards. And when we add to that the golf shoes right here, that puts us at 195 yards at the moment. Now we of course also have to play a putter so we can put that right over there. And now let's take a look at the holes. We do have two chip shots, which we could add 20 or 40 more to our yardage. And remember, we're currently at 195. Now, of course, each of these would add to our stroke, and we want to have the least number of strokes at the end of the game possible. And with 195, we could complete Foxtail. Unfortunately, with these, there does not appear to be a way to get a bullseye. That would be if we hit the yardage perfectly, and that would let us trash something else, but uh, that's not going to happen for us now. Uh, now, we can see that we are not allowed to complete beginner's luck, because that says wood cards cannot be used for this hole, and remember, our vintage driver is a wood-style card. Now, we also can't do tiny gulch, because currently our yardage is more than 50 yards over that hole's amount. So we could play both of these in order to complete the cakewalk, but I think let's hold on to these and let's complete Foxtail right now. So once again, we have 195 yards, so that is going to be enough to complete this. We are player one, so we can put this right over there, and then we can take one of these two cards. So let's take a look. This is a three wood and this is a three iron, uh, and both of them unfortunately will add a duff card into our deck when we use them for yardage. Now we can see this 3 wood is a 270 yard card versus 200 over here. It's also significantly more expensive, so I think let's just go for the expensive one. It adds 80 credits instead of 55, so I think this is a bit of a no-brainer. We can now add this into our discard pile. And then of course we have to log our strokes. Now this is the third hole, and we have 1, 2, 3, 4 strokes for that. So we can put a 4 right over here. Now at this point, we still have these two chip shots in our hand, and we have now locked our A ability. That will let us trash a chip shot to double its credit value, and I think we should certainly do that. So that's going to give us 40 credits, and then we could add 20 more credits with this, or we could put it into our caddy card slot. This means we could have 40 or 60 credits, and that's not enough to buy anything in the pro shop. So realistically, the decision is do we add a broken T to our deck, or a 3 putt, or of course, we could just not buy anything with these credits. Now, I think having another putter is probably a good idea, so let's go for it. We will spend the other chip shot and not put it into our caddy area. That brings us up to 60 credits, and we'll spend 50 of that on another 3 putt. So we can add these into our discard pile, and at this point, I think we're done with a rather good turn. We can put all of these into the discard pile as well, and then draw 5 more cards from the top of our deck. Well, it's now time for player 2's turn. And they are going to start by playing their fitness trainer. Remember, this is a crew member, which means they stay on the table for the rest of the game. And this is going to add 10 yards for each club that they play, including their putters. So they can just put this over here, and it's never going to go back into their discard pile. Now, they do currently have a whiff, so they are forced to play it since it is a duff card. And then they have decided to complete another hole. They're going to play this 7 iron out. So as you can see, that's 135 yards plus 1 stroke. This whiff adds a stroke here, and then they are also going to add this putter, as well as this chip shot right over here. Now remember, every club is going to add 10 yards total, so that means they have 135 plus 30 plus 30 more for their fitness trainer bonus. This means all told, they are at 195 yards and 6 strokes. Now 195 is too high for them to complete beginner's luck, and it is enough for them to do foxtail. They're just 5 yards over hitting a bullseye. They're still fine with that though, so they are going to complete this hole, and that means they can put their player 2 marker down onto that slot. Now there's just one card left, so this is the one they'll take. That one is a 3 iron, and that's now going to go into their discard pile. Next up, they have to track their score. Once again, they have six strokes overall, and this was for the third hole, so they can put a six there onto the score pad. Well, it looks like that's finished up their turn, so they can discard these cards, but of course their crew member will stay out, and it's once again worth noting that on Foxtail, there are no more cards on top of it. Now, the third player is still incentivized to complete this, because if they don't, they are going to gain penalty strokes at the end of the game, but when they do complete it, they won't get a bonus card, because they completed it last. And of course, they then have to draw five cards from the top of their deck. Well, it's now time for player three to go. And it looks like they're going to play cards for yardage to try and complete a hole as well. Now, this five wood here adds 220 yards. And then they're going to play their five iron, which they also have in their hand. 
This adds 135 yards, and it also forces them to reveal the top luck card from the deck when they play it. So they can draw the top card, and this one is from the fringe. Now this is a lucky break, so they're happy to see that, and it says that chip shot cards count as putt cards until the end of their turn. Now that is certainly a lucky break for them. They did have a putting card in their hand, but of course that adds three strokes, so they are more than happy to not have to play this. Now of course they do need to play a chip shot, but they do have that in their hand. So they can put that right over here, and that will count as their putter. Unfortunately, they do have a whiff, so they will be forced to play that down. Uh, now, instead of playing this putter, they're going to put that over into the caddy spot. Uh, that's certainly going to be useful in the future when they need a putter to complete a hole. Now, at this point over here, they can count up their yardage, and it looks like they have 385 yards total. This means they have just barely undershot turns reach. We can see that requires 390 yards, and again, they have 385. Now we can see down here, Turns Reach has another restriction. It says players cannot exceed the hole's distance by more than 20 yards. Remember, normally you can exceed by up to 50 yards. So this is certainly not an easy hole to hit. Uh, now they are able to make the Broken Lighthouse work. That says 360 yards, and again, they have 385, which does put them within the Broken Lighthouse's plus 50 yard range. Obviously, you can actually make the Broken Lighthouse work with up to 410 yards if you needed to. Now, they are going to complete this one here, so that means they can put their player token down onto that spot. There are, of course, two cards here, so they can choose one. Now, there is an extra effect for the Broken Lighthouse, and it's actually a benefit. As you can see, it says hook cards do not subtract yardage on this hole. Now, if you remember, hook cards are one of the type of duff cards that you can take, and those normally subtract 30, so players are not penalized for having hook cards in their hand when they go after the Broken Lighthouse hole. Well, player three does have to choose one of these cards, and the one they want is going to be Lucky Lanny, who is a crew person. Now that says once per turn, you ignore the effects of one card with bad luck. Now that's a great card for player three to have, considering their five iron does force them to draw luck cards, so this will negate up to one bad luck card drawn each turn. So they can add Lucky Lanny to their discard pile, and they'll be able to play them once they have arrived in their hand later on in the game. Now at this point, they have to score this hole. We can see that is going to be four strokes, and they are player three, so they can add a four to that part of the score pad. All right, at this point, they are done with their turn. This luck card is going to go away, and all of these played cards will go into their discard pile, and then lastly, they can draw five more cards. Well, at this point, it would normally be time for our turn, but I am now going to stop playing through the game and instead discuss how the game ends and how we calculate our final scores. Now, there are two different ways the game can end. The first is, if we don't have enough Pro Shop cards in the deck to completely fill in this market of five, then the game will end immediately and we will go into final scoring. The other way the game will end is if any one player has completed all of the holes that you are playing with. Now, remember, you don't always have to play with nine holes total. This is a full game, but you can play a standard game with just six holes, which is going to be shorter, as well as three holes, which would be an introductory game. Now, in this example, we have the third player up here having completed all of the holes, and once that happens, every other player will get one more turn to go before the game is over. Now, at this point, I've simulated what it looks like once that has entirely happened, so now let's talk about endgame scoring. Now, the first thing to pay attention to is what happens for all of the holes that players have potentially not completed. Now, for each of these, we have to fill in a stroke amount that is worth double the par value of that specific hole. So, as you can see, player 2 did not complete holes 7 or 8, and each of those has a par value of 4. That means for hole 7, they are going to put 4 times 2 or 8 down as their stroke amount, and they will do the same thing for turns reach, so that is another 8 over here for the 8th hole. Now, we were not able to complete the ninth hole in this example, and as you can see, that has a par value of 5. This means we have to add a stroke value of 5 times 2 or 10, and we can put that in right over here. And once again, you want a low score, so we definitely don't like these double par penalties. After that, we can add up our subtotals, and then we have to take into account any stroke bonuses that we get from the cards that we have in our deck. Now, we were able to pick up this Titanium T, and that lowers our stroke amount by 4, and we have one Broken T in this example, full game, and that says that for every two of these, we'd lower one stroke, so one is not enough. So that means we would have a minus 4 right here, and a final stroke score of 49. 
Next up, player two ended this example game with three of these broken tees, and again, every two will lower their stroke score by one, so that is going to lower it by one, which brings them to a final score of 53, and then player three has a single broken tee, so that's not enough to lower their stroke score, so that means their final score would be 51, and once again, the player with the lowest stroke score would win the game, and in this example endgame scenario, we would be the ones to win. Well, at this point, I have covered just about all of the rules to the game, which means this tutorial has come to a close. I hope that you've enjoyed learning how to play Duffers. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including these producer-level Patreon supporters. If you too would like to directly support the channel in the creation of future videos like this one, then please go to jongetsgames.com support. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Thanks for watching.